If your bank forced you to share your account balance with everyone at the coffee shop, how would you feel? Yes, that's exactly what happens on most blockchains. Every transaction, every balance are completely exposed. But what if blockchain could work like your banking app, which is private by default, and then you choose when to make it transparent? I'm Idi Solubisi, developer educator at Midnight Foundation. In our last video, we explored how Midnight combined UTXO and account models. Today, we are diving into something even more powerful, how Midnight lets you choose between complete transparency and complete privacy for every single transaction. This isn't about hiding illegal activity. This is about giving you the same financial privacy you have with your bank account today while maintaining the ability to prove compliance when needed. Whether you're building a payroll system, trading platform, or DeFi protocol, in fact, Understanding children and unshielded token is very, very important. How do you store value on public blockchain that no one can see, yet everyone can verify it wasn't created from nothing? Think about that for a second. If validators can't see your transaction or your balance, how do they know you have enough to spend? And also, if they can't get to see your transfer amount, then how do they verify transactions balance and finally if they can't see who is sending to whom how do they then prevent double spending curious right today most blockchains pick a side bitcoin said everything public monero said everything private then midnight said why not both to understand this clearly let's start with unshielded tokens specifically night this is midnight native currency remember for our last video you don't have a specific balance. What you have is a specific UTXO. Your wallet might contain UTXO number one, what 50 nights. It could also contain UTXO number two, what let's say 30 nights. And probably you could have UTXO number three, what 20 nights. So in that case, your total is 100 nights, but it is really three separate digital beam. These unshielded tokens are completely transparent. Every detail is public. Who owns them, how much they are worth, or complete transaction history, everything is public. For example, when you send 60 nights to Bob, this is what happens. You consume UTXO 1 and 2, and that's 80 in total. You then create two new UTXO 60 nights, which goes to Bob, and then 20 nights comes back to you as change. Everyone watching the blockchain can verify this transaction. No secrets, no privacy. It's like doing your banking in a glass building. So when should you use unshielded token? First, paying transaction fees. Knight generates DOS, which pays for all transactions on midnight. Secondly, public treasuries that need transparency for trust. Also, charitable donations where visibility proves funds are used correctly. And finally, exchange listings that require full auditability. Sometimes transparency is exactly what you want. But wait, should a token use the same UTXO model, but with three cryptographic innovations that achieve the impossible? First, commitments. Instead of storing Alex owns 50 tokens on the blockchain, we saw something called commitments. Think of it like this. Imagine sealing your token information in an opaque envelope with a unique serial number on the outside. Everyone can see the envelope exists. They can verify its serial number but they can't see what is inside. In technical terms, a commitment is a cryptographic hash, and these commitments are stored in the global Merkle tree on the blockchain. Each new shielded coin adds a leaf to this tree, creating an ever-growing structure of private value. It might look like this hexadecimal string, which is a shielded commitment. This reveals absolutely nothing about the amount, the owner, or the token type yet it is cryptographically bound to those exact values if you change even one bit of the information inside you would get a completely different commitment secondly we have nullifiers when you spend a shielded coin you can't just remove it from a list it would reveal which coin was spent instead you publish something called a nullifier let me explain with an analogy when you enter a concert the tear of part of your ticket and keep the stop. If you try to enter again with the same ticket, they check their pile of stops and then they catch you. The stop proves a ticket was used without revealing which seat it was for or who bought it. 
Nullifiers work exactly like this. When you spend a shielded coin, you generate a nullifier. It's a hash computed from the coin's data and your secret key. The network then add this nullifier to a growing set. So if you try to spend the same coin again, the network sees that the nullifier already exists and then it rejects the transaction. This is where it gets interesting. The nullifier is computed using your secret key while the commitment uses your public key. This produced a completely unlinked value. No one can tell which commitment corresponds to which nullifier. The network can mark coins as spent without revealing which coins they were. Third, zero knowledge proofs. This is the glue that makes everything work. When you create a shielded transaction, you need to prove three things. The first thing is that you actually own a coin in the commitment tree. Secondly, that the nullifier you are publishing is correct for that particular coin. And finally, that your input equals your output values. And obviously, there is no money created from thin hair. But still, you need to prove all of this without revealing which coin, how much value, or who is involved. This is where zero knowledge proofs come in. So your computer spent about two seconds generating a mathematical proof, just a few kilobytes of data. You then send this proof to the network where validators can verify in milliseconds that your transaction is valid without learning any private details. So it means the proof essentially says, trust me, I did everything correctly and here is my mathematical evidence you can verify. Let's see both systems in action. Alice wants to send 100 tokens to Bob. The first scenario is unshielded transaction. For unshielded transaction, you can see the transaction data. You can see from, you can see where it's been sent to, and you can also see the amount. Everything on the blockchain. Everyone sees Alice's address and Bob's address. They also see the amount, the 100 nights that we just sent, and then they can also see the transaction ID. It also means that everyone can query this. Exchanges can verify Alice's balance decreased by 100, Regulators can audit the flow of funds. Plus, your nosy neighbor can see you just got paid. The second scenario is shielded transaction. For shielded transaction, you can see the data. We have the nullifier, we have the commitment, and then we also have the proof. On the blockchain, everyone sees the nullifier, the new commitments with two hexadecimal ashes, and then they can also see the zero knowledge proof that was generated, and you could verify everything. That's it. No amount, no addresses, no indication of who sent what to whom. And then Bob's wallet is constantly scanning new commitments, trying to decrypt them with his own private key. When he tries Ali's commitments for Bob, it results to success. And then Bob's wallet extracts the coin details and updates his balance. With that, Ali has successfully sent Bob's 100 tokens and no one else knows it happened. A very important key to note here is that these token types are not interchangeable. You can't just shield and unshield token at will. When a token is created, it is either shielded or unshielded, and it stays that way. So think of them like two different currencies that happen live on the same blockchain using the UTXO model underneath. This is why our last video on UTXO is so important. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. So here is how this dual system solves real problem today. So for payment system or a payroll system, a company needs to pay salaries privately and employees don't want coworkers to know their compensation. They use shielded token for salary, which is completely private. But then tax payment needs to be transparent for regulatory compliance. They can just use unshielded token for tax remittance. Another one is DEX trading. A decentralized exchange needs transparency for its other book, where traders need to see available liquidity. The other book uses unshielded tokens. But then, individual trade should be private. You don't want competitors to front run your strategy. Actual swap could then use shielded tokens. For DAO governance, a DAO treasury needs to be transparent. Members must verify their funds are properly managed. The treasury uses unshielded token for accountability, but individual votes should be private to prevent coercion and vote buying. So the voting uses shielded mechanism for privacy. That gives transparent results with private participation. The pattern is very clear and simple. Use unshielded token 
when transparency is required to build trust. And then use shielded token when privacy protects user. Mix them in the same application where each serves its own purpose best. Midnight builds privacy as a first class feature with clear separations. You can explicitly choose shielded or unshielded and the system is also optimized for both. With shielded tokens, you can generate viewing keys that let a specific parties like auditors to see your transaction without giving them you know spending power this solves the compliance problem that pure privacy coin face today this also means you can have privacy for daily use while still proving compliance when required and that's privacy without sacrificing legitimacy this is exactly what enterprises have been waiting for you can build application that strategically use transparency where it's build trust and privacy where it protects users. In the next video, we are diving into contract tokens, how you can build your own fungible and non-fungible token on midnight using Open Zeppelin standards. You will learn to create tokens with exactly the privacy and transparent properties that your application needs. Drop your questions below. If you are more excited about the privacy feature or the compliance capabilities, what exactly would you build with selective disclosure? Let me know in the comments. Also, I'm going to add all the links to our docs where you need to learn more about shielded and unshielded token and also practical examples. See you next time where we build our first custom tokens on midnight. Remember, privacy isn't optional, it is fundamental.